Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, I've got toasted marshmallow, cardamom, toffee, mint, eucalyptus, leather, cinnamon, nutmeg, oak. There's a huge amount of flavor in there. All right, what about a little bit of egg? Egg yolk. So you're saying an egg yolk in the beer? Yeah. No. <laughs> why, why would you put egg in a beer? So we're gonna put some sugar on these guys. So you're now gonna brulee the sugar into the top of the egg? Yeah, because caramelized sugar and cinnamon has a real nice flavor profile. So we'll get the smoke from the weed, and then we'll get the burnt sugar from the brulee. Yeah, I think the apples are going to really be complemented by that. There you go. And I'll take that one. <laughs> All right, gents. Bottoms up. Instantly, in that one mouthful, you have gone from being a complete madman to an utter genius, it is phenomenal. You've got apple in its best form, apple pie. You get the custard that coats the whole top of your mouth from the egg yolk, and you've got the burnt sugar that plays really well with the smoke character as well. I think it works. You really get the intensity of the rosemary as well. And I think we just need to be careful that we don't put too much because it can be really quite intense and resinous. Are you actually concerned about that being too intense when he's cutting up the hottest chili on right the planet? Now. I have to admit, I'm not completely confident about these other ingredients. This is either going to be very, very good or very bad. There's quite a fine line between genius and insanity, and I'm not sure which side of this line that's going to fall. But then you could say that about pretty much all the best things. We've got three signature ingredients. I think we should each put one of these in. Trinidad Maruga Scorpion Chili. Which are the hottest chilies ever in the world. Fresh Pacific kelp, which I harvested just off the San Diego coast. Rosemary grown in Stone's own garden. Oh, anyone who's worried we're not going to get enough chili in there, <laughs> don't be worried. Anyone who's worried we're not going to get enough saltiness of the kelp in there, again, don't be worried so much. Which, of course, makes me very worried. I love it, but I'm a little bit insane. Wow, uh, please, taste. No, f*** you. Ah, hot, hot, hot. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> That's impactful. And you know what's odd about it? I like it. Today, you're going to let me taste maple mm -hmm. syrup. Bourbon barrel. Bourbon least. barrel maple syrup. Oh, the smell of bourbon coming off that is incredible. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Holy, this is a solid bourbon. Mm. Yes, it is. Wow. It's like taking your favorite maple syrup, splashing it with bourbon and then ramming it into your mouth. Get some of the amazing maple syrup, layer upon layer of complex, dark, sweet amazingness. The aroma that's billowing our way out of this kettle's phenomenal. You've got the toffee, those toasted notes, and that huge hit of bourbon from the maple syrup. Here, that's a three-year-old lambic. Lambic is really the missing link between beer, wine, and cider. It's so beautiful, the sweetness in the front of your palate. You're getting the caramel, the toffee, some of the toasted oak in there. It's very, very complex, very yeah. complex. My father is there with a very old goose. That's your father. That's my father. For uh, special people, we open special bottles. This bottle is the typical goose bottle used in the 60s and in the 70s. Such a beer can age for a while. You can keep it for 20, 30 years without any problem. This beer is actually older than me seems to have a lot more of the toasty character, but still underneath that, you're getting all the citrus, the apple, the pear, the tannomyces. It ages beautifully. I've drunk a lot of special beers in a lot of special places, but to drink these lambics to yourself and your father here in Cancelon, I think it's the best beer experience I've ever had. The magic world of lambic. Cheers. Cheers. Sean, how difficult is it to get this? Impossible. <laughs> the beer is a straight lambic, and they've actually added the must of Pinot de Anise, which is uh, from a sulfite-free winemaker in France. Can I touch it? Yes. <laughs> Cantillon's been exactly the same for over 100 years. It's a working museum. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Bon Cheers, mate. For me, this beer is so far away from what most people perceive beer to be. It's a exquisite beer-wine mashup. 
And oh, what yeah. they do is fermented art in its highest, most beautiful form. To Brussels, to Belgium, yeah. to France. Cheers. Sonte. Cheers. What's the next dish? Notorious B.I.G. I love it when you call me Big Papa. I can yeah. call you Big Papa any time. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> wow. Is this for all three of us? That is just for me. <laughs> I hope something else is coming. And this is the medium version. There's a big version to this also. This is the medium one? Yeah. What exactly is all in this? So we have Portuguese sausage, spam, bacon, burger, fried rice, egg, onion and mushroom, three mixed cheese, chili, everything that's actually not good for you, <laughs> but tastes really good. That's where you got right there. You got to get that little burger in there, maybe. This is the ultimate comfort food dish. What's great, as you cut into it, the kind of flavors fall into each other. So by the time you get down to the rice at the bottom, it's got a lot of the flavors from up above. That's what it's supposed to do. For this dish, I'm going to go with Big Island White Mountain Porter, a local beer that has Hawaii's signature ingredient in there, coconut. Cheers. Wow, that was paired nicely. So it's a big beer, but it's a big dish at the same time. You've got all the flavors and everything in there, soaking in at the bottom. With the chili and that egg yolk, I think this might be better than can in can. That Delicious, is... James. Well done. I think local guys like me should know more about pairing beers. I think Scottish guys like me should know more about dishes that are this phenomenal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chocolate and cocoa powder, a little bit of salt. We're going to let it melt down. Their first pairing is Lancaster Brewing's Milk Stout with a chocolate donut. The chocolate qualities of the stout's roasted malt should go well with the chocolate glaze. So I think a milk stout's a great choice to use in a donut. So we're going to add some confectioner sugar, and it'll help it set on the donut. It smells fantastic. You can smell the fermentation from the beer. It's awesome. Homer Simpson would be excited. He's a connoisseur of both of those things. This glaze is going to go perfectly on some of Federal's secretly spiced cake donuts. Upside down, right in. Let's give it a nice dip. Dip it down, and then a little another twist. We've got this amazing chocolate beer glaze that we've just put. What have you done? That's a special one. Yeah, like he likes to double dip. Double dip. Double dip. We're going to add some cherry glaze. Drizzle that on and make a chocolate cherry donut. We use some cherry puree. What do you think? It's delicious. It's just going to really help us tie in with the beer. The beer's got some cherry, some raisins, some plum notes in there. Cross pattern. We can taste the beer alongside the donut. This is absolutely delicious. You get the chocolate, you get the beer and the sauce, the cherry glaze just ties it all off. The bitterness at the back end of the beer just cleanses your palate and makes you ready for the next bite. I think it's great. We need to find something to use as a filter. Usually the best thing to use is your sock. 23-year-old whiskey, one-day-old sock. Tastes <laughs> fantastic. I chose the perfect moment to show up. This is my favorite bit. We've been standing here for the last hour doing nothing, so it's about time. How much of these hops are going in? All of them. Uh, I'm skeptical. Four handfuls. I've got big hands. <laughs> and because this is going to be a very sweet beer, a nice amount of bitterness is what we need just to balance out a little bit. Oh, there it goes. And already it's coming out from this one, filling the cask below and going into the cask below that. Once we get all the work transferred in, we're going to spin it around, we're going to oxygenate it, we're going to use this to cool down the wort and infuse the spirit of bourbon into this beer. David, start it up. Hold your breath. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. We have liftoff. Wow. Wow, David. <laughs> awesome. David, it's beautiful. The casts are heavily charred in the inside, and you see those little bits of char the beers pick it up. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to filter this before we serve it. Nine, ten. For full throttle, gentlemen, full throttle. Five hundred year old beer still from Scotland to create a fermented version of Kentucky's most iconic cocktail. I say we celebrate with some of our beers. To the ultimate Scottish Kentucky collaboration. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I've got toasted marshmallow, caramel, toffee, mint, eucalyptus, leather, cinnamon, nutmeg, oak. There's a huge amount of flavor in there.